Hello, I'm Andrew from Cactus and today I'm with Lance in a uh, very wet Plymouth and we're looking at the latest in Navionics cartography. Okay, so we're looking at the uh, Navionics cartography here on a, uh, a Raymarine uh, chart plotter. Um, so Lance, can you just take me through, you know, maybe for people that are not that familiar with uh, the presentation of electronic charts, what exactly they're seeing? I can, you know, it's obvious we're in Plymouth and we're looking at Plymouth Sound, but um, can you just take me through some of the sure. uh, features and marks? Sure. Okay. So what we're looking at here is Navionics Plus cartography, which is loaded onto a chart card that's plugged into the uh, Raymarine uh, multifunction display. And we're looking at the nautical chart element of it. So... What we have on here is the uh, all the objects that you would expect to see on a nautical chart. For example, there's uh, a, a boy here. If we put the cursor on this boy um, here and go to uh, back there and chart info, we'll see that it's a lateral boy called Melempus. It's a port hand lateral mark um, and you get its lighting characteristics there. Uh, red flashing red every four seconds. So that means when you're coming into harbour, particularly at night time, yep. um, this is going to flash uh, like that uh, in, in, in that sequence. Um, is there a, I mean, you know, in an area like this, I can yeah. see there's, there's a lot of information. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to, you know, to filter some of that out depending on the range you're looking at so you don't see a lot of clutter on the screen? Yes. I mean, Raymarine do have various settings on here. We can go, you can go to simple, detailed. You can okay. even go to extra detail. Uh, as all chart plotters, you can go into the menu and uh, customise the chart view to your, uh, to your own taste. You can change the colour ratios. You can change the uh, contour density and so on. Okay. Um, I know the question a lot of people ask is, you know, how detailed will it go? So maybe if we could look at one of the marinas, uh, I mean, we're here in um, uh, Sutton Harbour, but Queen, Queen Anne's Battery or Mayflower, what level of detail will it actually go down to? So this is Mayflower Marina, and we're seeing all the ind individual fingers of the pontoons. Um, you can see that they're named uh, A, B, C, D. So if you're visiting the marina, you'll be told, uh, please go to whatever uh, pontoon that they direct you to. Um, <clears throat> you've got shoreside facilities showing on here as well. Um, and you can get uh, even more depth information, which I'll move on to uh, maybe in a se separate uh, section in a moment. Um, but you also get to see the, the light sectors. Uh, so this is the light sectors of a particular uh, light here. So if you're viewing it, if you're coming in from uh, uh, this angle, you're seeing it as green. If you're coming in from here, you're seeing it as red or yellow. So let's just look at the features um, around Drake's Island, shall we? Okay, so this is Drake's Island. You can see the main shipping channel comes around here. This is for, for large ships and, and many leisure craft also do that. And you can see here that uh, this is what we call a drying area. Um, so at the lowest astronomical tide, um, it, particularly spring tide, it gets very, very uh, low here. And you really wouldn't want to be taking your boat through this narrow passage, which is uh, indicated through the center of those uh, buoys there, um, port and starboard buoys. And, and the figures, the th these figures here, these are spot depths? Are they? Yes, these are spot depths. Yeah. So we have a, a mixture of contours and spot depths. So, so there, for example, is a six meter contour. And these are spot depths at uh, various locations uh, between the contour uh, lines. And that's always in metric, is it? Uh, you can change that. This okay. is a uh, metric, but you can change it. To, uh, that's in the uh, chart plotter uh, structure. You can just go into the menu feet and, and fathoms uh, feet, feet and fathoms. You uh, money, yeah. yeah, whatever units you want to you want to show. <clears throat> so you can see, actually, this is quite good because you see a number of marinas at, at one level here. We've got, we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven marinas just on that one shot. It's quite uh, useful if you're particularly visiting the area for the yep. first time. And, and the, the, uh, the commercial port there, of course. Yeah, the commercial port, put, put, uh, the ferry terminal goes out of here. The, uh, uh, the uh, Brittany Ferry runs from there. That's right. And this is also uh, quite a major marina over here at Mayflower. Um, you've got uh, several uh, fingers, uh, several pontoons, all marked A, B, C, D. So if you're visiting there, they would tell you to please go to whichever uh, uh, pontoon was relevant and you just uh, follow that through. So there's also uh, 
very useful tide and current information in here as well. So if you see here, for example, is a diamond uh, with a T in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, if I put the cursor on there, just uh, hold it there. Uh, take this one and it comes up with tide station. And here you can see uh, the date and you can see the state of tide right now and uh, what it's going to do. You can move the cursor along, get the time and the depth shown here uh, as I'm moving along. And you can you can actually animate this so that you get arrows showing and uh, and we can we can look to see what the tide's going to be doing in a week's time. Yeah, yeah, a, sure. You can time. just uh, you can just call up uh, within the menu. You can call up other dates, and uh, you'd have that tide information in there. This is tidal height we're talking about here. And do we get flows as well? Yeah, you also get uh, uh, current diamonds uh, such as this one here. If I go there. Um, this one and current station so that c stands for current station and this is now showing you um speed and direction uh of the uh, of the current you see the here that's yep. coming in the times and the speed here if i move it along move it back a little bit you see we have one not a lot going on today one, uh, one not a current at 13 to 34 and it's uh, coming in so that's there are other settings within the plotter in which you will switch on useful arrows actually to on that current station all of a sudden it becomes a, an arrow and that helps you to uh, get an immediate idea So looking at more detail at the tide and current information, you see the diamond that we had up a moment ago was saying C for current. Uh, I've actually now animated and we can see uh, that, that the tide is coming in and that is the speed of it, uh, 0.9 knots in this particular, at this uh, particular time of day. If I move uh, further along here, we'll see that other current stations are also animated. We see okay. tide coming through there. And you'll see also the, the tidal height stations uh, are animated. We're seeing we've got 4.2 meters right here at that point, um, and the tide is coming in. Uh, and will that be constantly up. updating? Yes, the, uh, there's uh, several years worth of tide and current information, tide and current data in every single Navionics chart. Uh, apart from one type, but yeah. um, th this is a uh, is very useful. Um, and I once I switch that off, you'll just revert to that being uh, shown as a T or C. Okay. So we have another feature called community edits. So community edits is another part of the Navionics Plus charts, and you can see here um, if I switch that community edits off, you'll see several of these objects disappearing. So if I go there, there, okay. several of those objects in that area are no longer showing. That's because they're things that have been added by the community. Using the Navionics mobile app, um, it's a separate layer within the app whereby people can add useful information. So if I switch the community layer on here, um, that information that's come from the Navionics mobile is now available for customers uh, with the chart plotter. Okay, so, so what are we actually seeing? So there, we're then? seeing here, if I query, let's bring it full screen, and you can see, for example, here, every community edit you can is distinguishable because you can see that little icon plus okay. on there. So if I put the cursor on there, of course you should be uh, treat it with caution because it's an edit that somebody's yeah, put but on you there. can switch it on and you switch can it switch off. it on or off. But yeah. what I recommend is that you treat everyone with caution. But we've been had community edits for a number of years now, and we found that it's become a very useful tool. Um, and uh, on the whole, we get very little spam or rubbish. Yeah. Um, if we're getting that from one particular user, the, the user is just removed. Um, and indeed, anybody can edit that edit as well. So mm -hmm. another user can come on and say, no, it's not quite there. It's 10 meters to, uh, yeah. further away, and they can edit it. So if I put the cursor on here, in fact, the original chart that data that we had for here didn't actually have the uh, fuel station in. But you can, if I go to chart info here, you can see gasoline service station is now available on, there on Mayflower Marina. Now that wasn't on the original chart, but it's been added quite possibly there by the um, by the marina operator. Okay. Maybe he's moved the gas station yeah. at some stage and it wasn't on the uh, original chart. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's... 
an obvious uh, yeah. community edit. What, what other kind of things well, do you see there? There's one particular good one that I can remember on the Solent, for example, in the around the island race a couple of years ago, where a boat actually sunk near the Needles, um, and uh, fortunately everybody was rescued. Uh, so, but unfortunately the boat was lost. Uh, it hit a rock in the, near the Needles. It sunk. Uh, and I can say within a few hours, it actually it was shown on the chart as a community edit. Whereas in the official, the official ways, before we get that data, yeah, uh, might be, the normal, might be many normal Samaras, could be many, many months. Mm -hmm. So that's a, an immediate uh, benefit of community edits. The community edits can be anything from, as we've just seen there, from a petrol step, from a, a diesel station to a, a wreck to a new buoy that's not been appeared on the charters yet a marina operator maybe changed things around he can actually do the community community edits himself immediately if he's put some new boys in place uh, so it's a really useful tool so it, it's it's a tool for putting uh additional marks but you're not actually changing the sort of physical data of the no of you the never charts. change the original you can't move there. a headland or you, anything you cannot can't move have. a headland but yeah. for example if you felt if it was really obvious uh, maybe there had been a very bad storm or something like that and a particular buoy or channel marker had moved, uh, you could actually say that that channel marker is not there. You could actually, it would always be there on the official yeah. chart, on our chart, but you would move it and say it's actually here and that move would be shown as a community edit. So you'd actually get two icons there. Okay. Of course, when it comes back, that community edit can be removed. Yeah. So this is the nautical chart um, element of Navionics Plus. And what I'll do now is switch over to sonar chart. So if I hit the menu, go here to uh, fishing chart. So that's what it's known as on the, uh, this uh, plotter. And you see all of a sudden now we've got a lot of uh, very dense contours. Now these can be filtered. Uh, we can make them less dense. Um, Fishermen particularly like them very dense because it shows where the drop-offs are. It shows where the fish are likely to be feeding. And um, I'll just show you out here the Eddiston Lighthouse, which is quite a, a very popular fishing area. Uh -huh. You can see, let me just get it here now. There we are. There's the Eddiston. Now, if I just switch between the fishing chart, which I'm at present, to detailed, that's the regular chart. Sure, we set, we get lots of contours, and of course, we see the drying areas and where the rocks are, etc. Um, but if I wanted to be doing some fishing out here, I'm going to switch to the fishing chart because I really want to see where these holes and troughs are uh, 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 around there, where the fish are likely to be feeding. Um, it's an amazing level of detail. It is, yeah. This is a sonar chart is a revolutionary change that's happened in this last uh, three or four years. It's been. Um, something that uh, we see as a major development in uh, cartography, which we uh, were the first to come to market with. Um, you see, if you're a, a yachtsman even and you're coming into Mayflower Marina, if I switch it to the detailed chart, there's the regular chart. But you can see there's quite a contour line running here, a 30 metre contour. If I switch it over to fishing chart, you can see how that's uh, step down into this. There's quite a it, hole there. When you talk about fishing, uh, is, are there any more, you know, levels of detail or any more features that display on the sonar chart, or is it just the the, the contours? Uh, uh, no, it's not just. This is literally the sonar chart layer that we're looking at. Yeah. So we're seeing all the navigation aids just as we were seeing them on the nautical chart just yeah. now. Uh, but typically, if you're using it for normal. Uh, entering a port or navigation and so on, you'd be using the detailed chart and referring to the uh, fishing chart from time to time if there's some area that you're, you, you need a little bit more uh, uh, information about to help the situation awareness. Okay, so having taken a little sneak look at the, uh, the catalogue, I'm, I'm seeing something about Sonar Chart Live. Well, can you tell me what exactly that is? Sure, okay. So Sonar Chart Live is a way in which you can... Uh, create your own depth information, your own depth contours in live, real live time as you're out on the water. So um, literally it's a useful aid to be you fishing or being you, or if you're in a, uh, a new area and you want to get some more information for yourself in real time as you're moving, it's a very useful tool. So if we go here uh, and I go to uh, settings and depths, I'm going to scroll down here to Sonar Chart Live and switch this on. Uh, go back to the chart 
And you can see here, this is a, something that I did in my own boat, actually. This is a what we call a tail of... Uh, so, so the red line we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, the, yeah well, the, the red, red and you see this, you can see yeah, going yeah. all the way across yep. there and then here. This is a, a tail of uh, depth information and contours that I've created. Uh, this is sonar chart live data. But that, that's my own data on my own card for me to refer to any time I want. I actually did this on another card and transferred it from that card and put it on this one. Um, and you can see I was actually doing, a, I was doing some fishing around here with a friend of mine. And I just, uh, uh, this is a very, very deep uh, channel, as I've described earlier, where, we, where aircraft carriers and submarines go through. But you can see here, the red is indicating how it shallows down. So I went into here and, and back out again. It gets a, a bit deeper here. But this is really useful information to have in real time as I'm moving and then save it uh, for further reference. I can filter the, uh, the, the contours. I can go into the, uh, the uh, plotter menu and filter and have more or less contours uh, um, to my like. I can change the opacities, which means that um, I may not want to see them so bold as that. Um, that's 100% uh, visible. I can filter that down so they're not so visible. So that's really useful. I mean, again, obviously of interest to fishermen, but I know of yachtsmen that would use it uh, when they're uh, anchored up and they just want to get an idea of what's underneath them uh, some, for some additional reassurance or going into a, a new area. So it's a very useful to tool. Okay, so the question people always ask us is, uh, you know, what does the standard UK, what area does the standard UK and Ireland chart uh, cover? Because we see people want to cross over the channel. So can you just explain what area it does actually cover? Sure. Well, this is uh, shown in our in our catalogue of information, of course, and um, it actually covers from northern France uh, right up to uh, the north of Holland, even goes through into the Elbe and uh, 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 taking you through into the Baltic. Um, uh, and then you've got the uh, Shetlands and all of Ireland. In fact, if I show you the chart boundaries, you can see here, this is the area of coverage of this particular chart, which is called 28XG, covers all UK, Ireland and Holland, so, including so for, in, inland areas as well. So unless you're planning on going down to the Med or uh, I guess going through the, you know, the uh, French canals, that's, that's pretty much yeah. every chart you're ever going to need. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it does all of northern France. You're going to cross to the Channel Islands, Cherbourg Peninsula, even go down into Paris. It follows the same down into Paris. We're even going into Dutch inland waters. They've got all the Dutch inland waters. And, on there. and, and the level of detail on that is the same wherever I go. So I can zoom in just as much into uh, Plymouth or into Lymington, the Shannon, Yes, um, you can say the level of detail is generally the same everywhere, certainly marine, I mean coast-wise. Mm -hmm. When you come to inland, we're using different sources inland, and sometimes that information isn't always available. So this is going back to what I mentioned about our sourcing team, who are constantly looking for good sources so that we can integrate that data into the charts as well. And it, that's increasingly uh, uh, happening. So our inland coverage is getting better and better. There's many hundreds of, of paper charts on that on that area. But, you know, I've just got a small boat and uh, operating, operating out of Plymouth. And, you know, I don't really need to get a chart of that that big an area. So is there a, uh, you know, is there a smaller chart for me? Sure, Andrew. So if I look here, this is our, what we call our Navionics Plus small areas. And you can see if you're down here in the southwest, this chart number, um, either 830 or 829. You've got 830, which goes from Liverpool to Exmouth. That's more than the southwest, of course. Yeah. Or 829 taking you from Falmouth to Chichester. And again, uh, the level so of detail... That's a big area for a small chart. That, that's a big area for a small chart, but... We used to the areas used to be smaller than that, yeah. and uh, then people said, "Oh, they wanted a bit more," so we yeah. added a bit more. So uh, we try to keep as many people yeah. as we can uh, happy here. Um, and again, the level of detail that you're getting there exactly is the same. exactly the same as we saw on the bigger chart just now. Yeah. And they're about half the price, are they? Uh, the, yeah, they're more or less half the price. So a few moments ago, we looked at the uh, standard Navionics Plus cartography. 
Now we're just taking a closer look at the Navionics Platinum Plus, um, which is Navionics's premium cartography. What what more do you get with with this? Because it you know it's uh, a little bit more expensive. Okay, sure. So you get uh, all the features that uh, I've shown you in Navionics Plus, but in addition, you get more information to help situation awareness. Things, for example, like panoramic port photos. If you see here. Uh, there's various ways of accessing the photos, but if you see that, there's a camera icon. And if I hit the camera icon with the uh, cursor, and press photo, there you'll see a photo, uh, top-down photo of the area, a panoramic view, giving me a better idea of what it's gonna look like when I get to there. So just like you would look it up in the uh, Almanac, uh, there's a way there in which you can actually get a photograph of the of the uh, area. And so if I go across to Mayflower again, there's another example. There's a, hit the camera icon. Sorry, I got there. Photo. And there's Mayf the entrance to Mayflower Marina. Yeah. Kind of brings it alive, doesn't it? Yeah. Gives you a better uh, sort of perception of going into the uh, uh, the areas here uh, and the layout of the marina. So that's one thing that you get with platinum charts. Um, you also get uh, what we call satellite overlay. So going through the menu, I can switch on um, through settings, go to layers and switch on the aerial overlay and i switch that back. You can see now I've got an aerial overlay of the area. And this now, is a, a, like a Google Earth. This is like effect. a Google Earth image. Yeah. Um, it gives you, a, well, these are very detailed, as you can see. Um, you can, in this case, I've got it set to land only. You can ha also have it set to land and shallow or land and sea. So if you had it set to land in shallow, these sh these drying areas, you'd actually start to see some of the, if it got muddy, some some parts of the country in particular where um, the uh, uh, regular tracks are laid through the mud, where more channels are laid through the mud, and the aerial overlay actually is a, is a way of uh, showing that uh, uh, in, in a bit more detail. So you could switch on, in that case, land and shallow. So that's quite a useful tool. So incredible how it uh, you know, it lines up. It's an absolute perfect match. Yeah, that's right. It's a big job doing this, but uh, it's uh, uh, as you mentioned, Andrew. It's one of our premium features with uh, Platinum Plus. Okay, so another feature of uh, Platinum Plus charts are pilot books. So you can see here this little icon that's uh, the, uh, what we call the Port Services Guide. It's a little uh, magenta colored uh, sailboat in a circle. Um, if, I, if I click the objects in that area, uh, chart, uh, chart info, scroll down to pilot book. And there you can see the area um, pilotage information coming into this area. This is a, uh, uh, covered throughout the uh, platinum chart, so there's a lot of information um, that you can gather from uh, the pilot books as well. So okay, so uh, we switched to a different screen here with uh, Lawrence uh, just to show the uh, the other feature of platinum, which is uh, we've gone through satellite overlay and panoramic photos, but 3D view is a nice feature. So here on the screen we've got our typical top-down 2D view. Um, if I switch 3D, you can see the chart now angles over. So a bit like uh, I have in my car, actually, the, sat, the, uh, the mapping goes into perspective view. So if I switch back to 2D, I'm just seeing that amount, that area. But say I'm coming through this channel here, I may want to get a better idea of what's further ahead of me rather than moving the chart around. Uh, I can just switch to 3D and it then... Um, tilts over and gives me a better perspective so I can see things that are, are coming up in, in the distance. And you can then use the cursor to uh, move around uh, the chart. You can see it in a, you can rotate and you can tilt the angle. It gives you more flexibility with the usage of the chart, basically. Okay, so this is the Navionics range right here. Navionics Plus which is uh, the full chart of the UK and Ireland, which I showed to you. This has uh, the sonar chart, nautical chart, community edits all loaded onto it. 
all the detail that I've uh, shown you and uh, uh, it comes one with one year of free downloadable updates. Same applies to this, which is the Navionics Plus Small. If you just if you uh, only need a smaller area, you're not going to cross the channel. You're not going to go from uh, Land's End to Dover. This is the chart that will do you. Same level of detail as you're getting in here, but just a smaller area. And then you can switch over to our premium chart. Uh, this is the one that has the satellite overlay, 3D view, panoramic port photos, and pilot books. Now, finally. This is our Navionics updates card. This is a great way to update your Navionics chart. So these charts, as I say, all come with one year of updates. After the year of updates with Navionics Plus, you can purchase a Navionics updates card if you want to continue to get chart updates and advanced features. So using our uh, online system, you would plug the updates card into your PC it would ask you to then plug in your Navionics Plus card, either of these. Then you plug this one back in and it automatically activates it and you're ready to go with another year of free updates. OK, so thanks lots for taking us through the, uh, the Navionics range. I think that's Pleasure. just a good, good insight into, uh, into the features and functions of the Navionics cartography. That's great. It's been my pleasure. Thanks very much.